Hi, I'm Hansi Herzog. Welcome to Co-Create, the global co-creation challenge. Our vision is to unite the world community so we're able to co-create a good life for all. To, um, welcome to today's talk. It's the first network talk and we had a very urgent and spontaneous change. So um, actually, I wanted to interview Mark Kane from the Open World Alliance. But because of urgent personal uh, reasons, he had to jump off last uh, last minute. So I decided to take the chance and do the call anyway, do an interview anyway, um, because I wanted to show up. I wanted to be committed and use the chance to speak to you, speak with you. And oh, here I am. Uh, in this call, I, as founder of CoCreate, will speak about the topic from network to ecosystem thinking. So, um, give me a minute here. Yeah. So, why I want to talk about this topic is because um, definitely it's about collaboration, co-creation, about networking, and um, I'm bringing the term of ecosystems. And in the last 10 years, I was focusing on these topics, collaboration, cooperation. I built a regional network. I have um, um, co-organized over 50 network events, facilitated group processes, and gave trainings to this topic. And throughout all this experience, I started to create the ecosystem model. And yeah, it's the, the main topic of the Global Co-Creation Challenge. So I thought it's a great start into, um, into the series of network talks. So from now on, each Thursday, there will be an interview where we um, invite the person or a network to present themselves and to speak about the topic of networks. And this will be the start. So what is in it for you today? First of all, you will get an orientation about the topic from collaboration to network to ecosystem. You will get an insight about what I see as problems of current uh, networks, how they are today. And furthermore, you will get more insights about the co-create ecosystem approach and its necessity. Before we get started um, with the topics, let's give a short organizational issues. Um, this is a prototype format. So we use right now StreamYard to stream to Facebook. Um, you can see the videos later on as well on YouTube. Um, or we'll find a better solutions in future. So if you have experience with streaming to an audience, please reach out for us and get on board to support it to become step-by-step -step more professional. Um, as a few right now from Facebook, you can use the comment section to get in contact with me so I can read it. I will take up your questions or your comments and um, yeah, introduce it to the other audience as well. So I'm really happy, looking forward to your participation. And as well as you see the video later on on YouTube, please use the comments to share your thoughts, share um, questions. I will come back to them later on. Um, yes, you will find, you will also have the possibility to find a protocol. So we have this Notion workspace. The link will be the video down below or is in the Facebook event posted already. There you can see um, a collection of some thoughts later on, as well as you can find ongoing events for the future. In general, as I said already, Thursday is the network talk. Each Tuesday we will have uh, an expert talk regarding the topic of a chapter. Right now, we are at the Visioning a Good Life for All. And uh, normally on the weekends, we will have our community calls. So the next is this Saturday. We're really looking forward to see you there. So I think that's enough from the intro. Let's get into the topics. If you see the agenda, we have uh, the topic first, the power of co, then the situation of current networks, then we will have a look on ecosystem and platforms. And at the end, um, I will take have a deeper look at the co-create ecosystem approach. 
the call will be around, let's say, one hour, maybe longer. We'll see. Um, if you have a lot of questions, I'm happy to answer them um, and take up your thoughts as well. So it can take longer or less. We will see. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So the power of core. Um, core, you might, might recognize it as the self, which stands in, uh, in front of many words like collaboration, cooperation, co-creation, community, and of course, in co-housing, co-working, and think words like that. So for me, co is probably the strongest self we have as humanity, because it shows that we relate to each other, that we are connected, and that we together can um, reach things nobody can reach alone. And so therefore, the, the word co-create um, is a uh, image for the organization or for the process, it's the invitation, create, it's the invitation to create this reality we would like to see. And together it's possible. So if we co-create, everything is possible so we can shape our reality we would like to see in the future. Um, and um, I have three different approaches to the word collaboration or cooperation. Um, and those I would like to share with you right now. So I will take on the possibility to share my screen so you can see it. And we go here. I hope you see it. I'm sorry it's in German because um, when I've worked together with or on an organization called Art of Cooperation, we're um, working in Austria, German speaking. I will guide you through. It's very short. It's just because I was speaking so much about co-creation, collaboration, community building, blah, blah, blah. And I realized that there are, for me, three different main approaches. So on the left side, you see here in green is the facilitation of collaboration. So it's the, you see the hand, it's the hands-on principle. It's uh, where you can find art of hosting, where you can find sociocracy, where you can find uh, nonviolent Oh, sorry, that's a mistake. <laughs> um, but where you can find different kinds of um, tools and methods, how to facilitate um, real action, real time collaboration processes where people come together and want to create something. So the focus is there on the social process, the decision making and so on. On the right side, you have the uh, relationship oriented community building. It's the heart. So this is um, where we focus on the relationship building between people who collaborate on the short or the, at the long term. Um, and there, are, of course, are, again, different tools and methods. What I really like to recommend here is the community building canvas. It's a canvas like a business model canvas where you have different questions and uh, guidelines where you can define your community and shape a identity. And at the bottom, we have then the net, the systemic network management. So it's then more about the, the planning, the organizational structure, um, where you also have system thinking and network thinking in it as a science form. And it's more of the organizational process, more the head. So you have the hands, the heart, and the head um, as different approaches to see on networks, on collaboration, community. In the center where everything is overlapping, you have the communication because it's an integral part of everything, um, yeah, everything we do when we come together, uh, where you have topics like the nonviolent communication. Yeah, so this is for now a very short intro to the wide field. And uh, in today's call, we are zooming in the network management because it's about networks and ecosystems. So I stop sharing. I'm coming back again. Hi there. Um, yeah, and this was the first point, very briefly, the power of core. Uh, of core. So um, the power, what can happen if we come together? Um, yeah. That's the first break in the next topic. The next topic is the current network. I see we have some uh, followers already here. Hi out there. Um, I'm really happy that you watch. 
And I invite you to use the comment section to get in contact with me, say hi, ask a question, share your thoughts. If you have interesting links, you can put them down below. I'm really happy if you make a participation process out of this. Um, yeah, thank you for now. And let's have a deeper look at the situation of current networks. So um, this, of course, is just my point of view, um, but I think it's worth sharing because especially CoCreate is building on this mindset and this point of view, these experiences. Maybe you have different experiences. Um, so where we are now or where we are going? I always um, realized that we have been in an age of organization. So people are coming together to form organizations to realize the aim a goal. And after, and after the time, um, after a while, they started to form networks. So organizations coming together um, because they believe they are stronger if they are um, sharing ideas, supporting each other and so on. And what I'm seeing, what is really important to come next is the meta network. So meta is always a level higher. You can micro, macro, me <laughs> micro, macro, and meta is the highest rank. So uh, what I really see what will come up next or what is actually happening already is the forming of network of networks. So probably we have already network of networks and what CoCrit is aiming for is to unite the network of networks, the largest one, because yeah, we really want to resolve some issues, which I'm going into right now. So um, networks. I have been part of different network processes on a smaller scale or a bigger scale in a specific region or to a specific topic. And what I realized is often it is networks are formed by organizations who have a similar need and therefore they're coming together because they want to be stronger. And from this already, the first issue is arising because the people who come together to form this network actually want to have the benefit out of the existing network. They don't really want to build the network. So we have the trouble of the ones who should build it have neither the focus nor the competence to build and facilitate the network. So there are different models right now speaking from a backbone organization means in they suppose um, or suggest that in each network, there should be like a backbone, a back office organization, people who really focus on the work of building a network because they can focus then and the members of the network can just participate and use uh, the benefits of the network. So this is one of the first uh, issue that the focus and the competences often are missing. So the second issue I was um, I saw during the last years of my involvement in networks was that often network starts out of a very similar target group or group of people out of a social background. So they're coming with the same issues and resources. So they come into a network and have more or less need similar things and can offer similar things. Um, and then, of course, there is the problem Then, when you come together in a network because you want to fulfill your needs, but you're while quite well um, similar in your needs, then there is nobody in the network who can fulfill it. Um, and this is the base, one important base for the ecosystem approach, where we'll go into more detail later, where we divide between infrastructure and the topic organizations, because there are, of course, change makers out there focusing on providing resources change makers need. And therefore, this is very, very important that networks include these resources so they can give a benefit to um, the members. So let's come to the third issue. Um, it's the problem of a social bubble or a silo. So my realization was, um, and this is the, the different, uh, what I said before that we are in, we had, or we are in a time of networks and now we need network of networks. We have to go a step further because I realized that often 
when organization coming together to form a network, uh, very fast they can come into a point where they're satisfied with where they are. So they are in contact right now, they have a network and they think it is what it is right now. We are connected, that's good. But they don't realize that they're actually forming just a social bubble, a silo, and are one between many others. But it's a kind of group dynamic that they are satisfying in the group. They are uh, in the process of the social connection and so on, and they they start to stagnate on a on a level. So this is the third issue that we are creating silos through networks which are not connected with each other. Two more are coming. So issue number four. Um, is the development of their own language and terms. Of course, when you come together in the group, you come from a shared or probably from a shared mindset or you go through a process where you're defining terms um, and your values and so on. And connected to the problem with the social bubbles is that you are forming your values and your terms, your words you're using within the social bubble and they are not really related to the terms and the words using other people in other social bubbles. And there's a two giving two problems inside. The first of all, on the level on the vision and value base is that visions and values of different networks and social groups might be very similar, but they are not similar enough so we can raise the awareness that we actually want bigger group. So we are dividing ourselves to a different form of how we speak or how we define some terms. So we are similar, but not the same. And then the human ego are coming in and say, oh, it's similar, but mm, mine is different. And those are other ones. So it's the thing with um, that social groups are creating borders and these borders, if they are not bridged very well, can cause a problem. And the second issue with the forming out of very specific terms and words is the connection, especially on the platform level. So on a technical level, we have different platforms which could be connected to each other so they can communicate because um, and this is something we want to do with co-create. When you see um, globally, I'm sure we have over 100 different maps, map platforms where organization can put themselves uh, show that here we are, um, or people or events can be mapped, but each of these platforms use different tags uh, and properties to describe this. And if we later on want to connect those, it's a huge um, yeah, problem or issue of translation and connection. And this is as well something which is separate us. And what we have to change and overcome in future so we can connect different networks to a network of networks. And now last, the fifth issue I was um, experienced the last years is the topic of building their own infrastructure. So each network has um, infrastructure which they need to run for itself and a kind of infrastructure to give a benefit to the members. Infrastructure in this term can be a platform, can be events, can be also the organizational structure and the funding structure. Um, and typically, and this is what I experienced by myself with the first project we made, was in a in Styria, a part of Austria, we created uh, a network. And the first two years we were spending in building a platform, defining our own values, um, the term system and so on. And just after these two years, we realized by zooming out, oh, God, there are many more other platforms like we, and we just created, spent two years of our time to create a platform. And it happens often that I meet people who said, oh, I'm going or want to develop a new platform right now. And what I'm saying always then is, please stop it. Don't do it because you are uh, wasting time creating another silo. It's much better to go to another platform which is already existing and use this one. Um, so this is the one uh, problem that we are creating silos with building a new infrastructure, we're wasting resources. And of course, um, the networks are limited because even if you have a backbone or a strong team 
who is dedicated to build this network. They just have a specific time of amount, amount of time, so they can just reach a specific level. And this was a really important understanding for me um, for the ecosystem model is if we are, if we as co-create not developing a new infrastructure, but connecting the infrastructure, which is already there, we can have a much higher impact because we first honor what is already there. We second, give them a, a showcase. We publish them. We help uh, infrastructure to get connection to their customers or users. And third, we can have much more at the same time because we don't have to concentrate on this and this and this once after the other with a small team, but we actually can connect everything we need at the same time by just connecting what we, uh, what we need. And you will see what I'm speaking about with infrastructure in more detail later on in the video when I'm showcasing the ecosystem model in more detail. Um, Yeah, like I said, um, this was have been my experience. Maybe you have uh, you had other experience in the past yet. I'm happy if you share them um, in the comments so you can use Facebook to comment. Please reach out, say hello, or give a like for this video uh, if you're watching right now. And for those who are join, joined new during the stream, uh, welcome to our today's talk. We changed the topic because the original interview partner has to leave for urgent um, personal issue. So I was um, stepping in and started this series of network talks with introduction of general thoughts regarding collaboration, networks, and especially the ecosystem. So we had the first comment. Hi. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate your, uh, your comment showing up. Uh, especially because you have a lot of experience in different communities. I'm looking forward. I hope you join the next community call as well um, to get more experience also as well with yours. You can use also the, the function, uh, the comments right now. Maybe you want to share a little bit about your um, experiences yet as well. So for now, we just close the topic of the current network situation. And before I'm linking um, these issues to the solutions we provide through CoCreate, I would like to take a look on the topic of ecosystems and platforms. So the term of the ecosystem is coming from ecology. Uh, in ecology, we know it since a long time because our world and each forest is an ecosystem and an ecosystem is a complex and dynamic system of organis organisms with which interact and support each other. And in this is very important for me, the words complex and complex and dynamic and the interaction and support of each other. Because we'll see uh, that probably each ecosystem is a network, but not each network is an ecosystem. What I often missing is the high density of um, interaction and the focus on supporting each other as well as the complexity and the dynamic. And this is something what is really, really important. So um, we have the base in ecology, but nowadays, since I think the last five years, um, the term ecosystem is getting more and more traction in the field of business. So there's the, the term business ecosystem. And on our webpage, the global co-creation challenge.net, at the point ecosystem, I linked up and I will put a link down below later on. I put a link into a PDF from Deloitte. Deloitte is a big uh, company, a big business company um, giving business, how do you say, advisory, business advisory. Um, and they wrote a huge PDF regarding the topic of ecosystem. And there is the saying that four out of the five biggest companies um, nowadays are ecosystems already. So they are not providing everything in-house, but split it up in different teams, which are interacting. Um, and it's also a changing in the business, changing the way how we see business from a streamline, like that, 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 to really like a network of uh, high connection interaction. And of course, um, I'm not, uh, not deeply into business and it's not my cause to 
um, to rebuild like capitalistic structures. But I think we can learn a lot of out, out of them. And if they are successful in making money with having ecosystems, why cannot we be successful in making impact um, by um, by having strong ecosystems? So in to repeat this, ecosystems are a very intense form of networks and are um, more and more broader now also in the business side and they're very well connected to the term of platform so i think the uh, word platform is quite common so in former time we just had websites with some functions and nowadays we have platforms where you can interact very detailed use different functions and so on and platforms are mostly connected to an ecosystem in any way because there are like the the door like the window to access to an ecosystem and it will be the same with co-create so we want to connect the different organizations and infrastructure which are already out there and the door to them will be mainly a platform a technical platform and you can divide platforms as we know um, nowadays in three different categories there are the aggregation platforms so it's about collecting different informations. We have social platforms where it's focusing on interaction and communication. And we have the mobilization part where it's about bringing people together to mobilize for a common goal. So the main difference, um, uh, the fourth would be learning platforms. I add this here. So it's also kind of, um, of course, there are mixturing because by learning, you have the social interaction and bring together knowledge. Um, and for the aggregation, I have a really nice um, example um, to share a point of view of co-create. So we know nowadays um, travel, like travel platforms. Uh, in former days, when you wanted to book a flight or travel, you went to an office to book it there. Then the time came when flight um, organizations put on the website the function so you can book there a flight at the company. The next step has been that there were platforms or aggregation platforms, search engine, where you can search your flight and they will search the best offer for you. And what we had during the last years arising already is if you want to book a flight through this um, search engine, you cannot only find the flight there, but also like a car, a place to stay, um, something, uh, some things you can do at this place. So they're interlinking. And now imagine this um, in the world of change makers. So probably you, as, you want to do um, a community garden and you search for a specific type of on say that, let's say others, you want to find information regarding food and you search for a very specific type of information and they can and the the platform which will aggregate and connect the network of networks the global solution ecosystem can it can give you uh, a wide variety of information um, maybe what organizations or community gardens are close to you but also which other kind of uh, food providing are there like um like community supported agriculture and so on and of course if you're interested in sustainable food and fair and ecologic organic food you might be also interested in um, housing projects or in solutions for a fair sustainable mobility and i think this inter this interlinking of different topics are very very important and want, we want to reach this with co-create and I started before, I will add it here. The other point of view, now we had the point of view of a consumer. The other point, point of view would be if you're a change maker and you are searching for, let's say, funds, there are aggregation platforms already out there who collect funds. So it's easier for you to get a big variety. But if you're a change maker and want to start a project, is it the reality that you're just searching for one thing? So my own reality was I was searching for volunteers. I was searching at the same time for people who want to use my uh, platform. I was searching for knowledge for um, other projects who do something similar. I wanted to have funds. I was searching for this and this and this and this. And 
there is really the big power, I think, of having a strong ecosystem that we can bring together all the resources we need to implement solutions on a big scale. Because I imagine having millions and millions of community gardens around the world and millions and millions co-housing projects around the world. But therefore, we have to make it easier for them to connect to the resources they need to implement their projects. And this is what we want to aim for with co-create. And I think that's already the best step to have a look at the next, next point of today. And we just finished up, so for those who are new to the stream, welcome. Uh, we just finished up the theoretical part of ecosystem and platforms. And now we will have a look on the very concrete co-create ecosystem approach. This is already the last point of this um, stream, but I will take a little bit more time um, for those who want to get more detail. And for those who are leaving earlier, I'm grateful that you followed this stream so far. Um, I hope there were some interesting information for you. And please check out the links uh, below to connect to our next events and the possibilities you have already now with co-create because we are a growing process where you can do and support and find something for you right now as well already and we will start to connect the infrastructure i was talking about um, during the next weeks so before i step into the next topic i will check the chat and comments we have this a great startup sherry by org Thank you, Robert, for sharing a very specific project. I'm happy to take it and put it into the database where I'm collecting things. And I'm really looking forward to share this with you as well. And yeah, so if you have ideas, things you want to share or questions, do it like Robert and just write a comment at Facebook and I can see it here and take it on. Thank you. So, the co-create ecosystem approach. Um, we were speaking before about the issues of current networks. Um, to summarize it, it was um, people who grow networks often don't have the focus and expertise. We are often missing the diversity of actors. We are creating um, social bubbles and social silos. Um, we, we have a problem with very specific terms which are not able to connect to other networks as well and we have a limited infrastructure because of lack of resources and um, i was thinking out of this experience and different networks i have seen so far um, what approach would help us to overcome this and i came to the idea of connecting the global uh, ecosystem the global community and of course, I'm not the only one dreaming about, there are other organizations who want to do this. Um, currently, I'm in contact with some of them who will showcase them in further network talks. I'm really happy to get in contact with those. And yeah, the basic is I have spent my time on developing something and this is what I can share. We'll see what comes out. And I really deeply believe that we need a strategic approach for it. Um, to connect the vision of a network of networks to realize a good life for all with concrete actions. Um, so yes, I would like to share my screen again now. Some of you might have seen this graphic already. Um, if so, I just can recommend that you keep on anyway because each time, especially it was for me as well, each time when I got a point of view of it, I changed my understanding. So to not get overwhelmed, let's guide you through this graphic from the left side to the right side. So first of all, let's focus on the left side. And what you see here, it's the very, very basic core of co-create. I spent a lot of time in developing this. And what I came up with is on the left side, you see the ecosystem sector uh, sectors. Um, so I started to, to divide organizations in different roles and purposes. From the outside to the inside, we have the level six is the general public. So those are people who are not involved yet in changing processes. As well, each of us is a change maker in our personal private life with our private needs. And the public phase 
is relating to the topics. So the topics are providing solutions for the public. The topics area, um, and you see here the 17 SDGs, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals from the UN. It's a framework I have chosen because um, to tackle the issue I mentioned before of different terms and different definitions. Um, because the SDGs are quite well known right away and a lot of uh, organizations are referring to them. So it's easier to create a common language, a common framework of topics when you use something other people use as well. So it's easier to connect. Of course, I know and share some points of the discussion around the SDGs. They are, first of all, not perfect. Some things are missing, M might be some abstract, um, but I think they're good enough for now and we can develop on this later on. So in the topics here, you can see topics like hunger, it's like food, health, education, with water, energy, gender equality. Uh, we have the communities and cities, we have environment issues and so on and so on. So here we collect organizations working on very specific topics um, with product services or knowledge they provide for the public. Um, and we do it so, so it's easy for us as a private person to connect to the resources we need on an everyday life base. And there I've speaking, spoke, I spoke about it before uh, quite much already, is the infrastructure. So here we are collecting a different type of organizations. There are also change makers, sustainable businesses, uh, scientists who are focusing of, uh, for uh, focusing on solutions and resources change makers need on an everyday basis. Might not be needed too much by the public, but it's necessary to have an easy access for change makers so they can um, have more impact and focus on the topic they love. So in the infrastructure, we have things like IT platforms, we have funding, we have facilitation for group processes, we have science and knowledge, we have communication media, and question mark, of course, there are many more, like we have events, we have spaces, and they might pop up in other infrastructure kinds as well. Um, then if we go into the center, we have the node, the node is like a backbone organization. It's like the office. It's like we said before, networks need a facilitation, need an organization so the members can focus on the work they are doing um, and don't have to build the ecosystem by himself. So we have the, the node, the backbone here. Uh, number two is here the model. The model is on the one side, the model I'm proposing here but in future it's the general model of the system architecture. So it's the organizational operating system where we define how we communicate, how we make decisions, how everything is connected and so on. And you see it as a DNA, so the model is going through the whole ecosystem, connecting these different uh, organizations and resources from where they are standing and make it as easy as possible for them to connect. And in the center, we have the philosophy so here we see the vision, the values, principles, everything what is connecting us on a deeper level. Um, yeah, on a deeper level, let's keep it like that. And what you don't see on this graphic because it's a structural graphic it are the processes. So each of these points here have of course sub points like platforms, there are maps, there are shopping platforms, there are um, organization platforms, media platforms, social platforms, and so on. So they have sub points and sub points and so on, subgroups. And behind each of those pictures is a co-creation process. So what we will introduce on Saturday for the next challenge for connecting the philosophy is that at each, uh, at each part we're going through a process of collecting, networking, co-creating and self-organization. In this kind, we bring it together the resources which are out there, bringing the people together and enable a co-creation process where they can 
um, form portf portfolios, merge to more healthy organizations, and co-create better solutions. And on a level of self-organization, we want to support them to grow collectives and cooperatives so they can do what they do on the long term with a um, stable finance background. We will come in this to this future uh, in future and like this is one basic of the global co-creation challenge it's a process and we will share more and more information over time so you you're not getting overwhelmed and for us it's very important that you over time find your specific part where you can bring in your expertise and network with those people who do something similar and you can reach out easily for the resources you need and you can be easily found by the target groups or the users who need your skills and benefits. And it's really a deep belief of myself that we need a kind of structure for that to make it more easy to connect this uh, great big amount of resources and information. And it's getting even bigger when we shift our view to the right side, because on the left side, we just see the theoretical model on a flat base, but on the right side, we see that this, of course, take place on a global, national, regional neighborhood level. So we have different territorial levels because change happens on different levels. We have organizations and issues which are focusing mainly on the global level. And we have a specific kind of knowledge and tools which can easily exchange on the global level. At the same time, we have issues and actions which have have to be tackled on a neighborhood or a regional level and actors which want to organize themselves in this level. And therefore we are dividing them and um, to, to be able to address them very specifically. So we will grow um, the global as well as local ecosystems within. The base of this graphic, you also see the uh, individual as a prosumer. So, Every member can give something into the network as well as taking something out. It's like a Wikipedia principle. The ecosystem is built and is filled by the members. That's why it's so important that you are participating regularly so we can build this together. It's nothing what we have created for you. We are mainly inviting to this process and facilitating through the steps of connecting. And at the top, we have this evolutionary organization principle. So what I said right now, it's developing, it's involving. We haven't um, have a finished platform. It would be in um, harming because then we would be in concurrent with other platforms which already exist. And we have, would have wasted our um, resources to build a kind of platform. So we evolving over time, we will change everything as we progress. And even that this is very important for me to say, we will change co-create as a label, as an identity. Because I know there are people out there who are um, offended, maybe offended or uh, irritated that there is like a brand and maybe it's coming and is putting themselves over everything. But for me, it's really like just a platform, like a base, uh, something where we can connect on. And I'm sure after one year will be so many organizations that it's very necessary to reinvent our identity and probably the brand is shifting. And maybe five years later, we had another huge um, leap and we have to identify or rechange our identity again. So there is a system within the ecosystem providing this change um, and where we keep track on decisions we made and we decide also together how often we want to reopen these decisions again because not everything makes sense to change and change over time. Um, so we have different intervals of um, of changes and decision making. But this is something very much more detailed for later. Right now, I will stop the screen sharing here. Um, I will check out the chat again. Again. Uh, Robert, thank you. SG is a very good start. I appreciate that you're sharing this. Um, I'm also the, the opinion of it. Um, as I said, I'm aware that there is some negative discussion around, but I'm really, let's say, optimistic that 
in the next term, because I don't know how long they are going right now, maybe 2025. Um, and then we can not influence, but be part of the process of forming the SDGs so we can bring in our thoughts around it. And I have to say that forming the SDGs has been quite a big process. So there has been really many experts and NGOs and people have been involved in finding this. And of course, it's not perfect. But thank you for sharing this. Another share. Ah, oh, perfect. The, um, Robert is re, re, um, relating to the thing I was talking about, being flexible. And he said, flexible with our attachment. I love this saying um, because, yeah, it's about the attachment. Of course, we have developed projects in the past. Uh, there may be a lot of big platforms out there that put a lot of energy in it. But what does it... It makes no sense to hold on if there is no moving forward. I know there is the sunken cost theory. So if you put a lot of energy in something, um, you are not likely to get loose of it. You will attach to it. You want to protect it. But I think, and this is something we really need a lot of professional facilitators. So therefore it's a part in the infrastructure to go this, go through this process of um, connecting to let go of our egos and probably some projects will merge over time because they see together they have more power because that's really what I see right now. There are many platforms, many projects who do something similar, who are lacking out of resources to really create something great. Um, and they are searching for the same kind of members. So um, they're really not going over the, the critical mess. They don't reach a critical mess. And by helping some of those coming together, I think we will get better tools and we'll get uh, more diverse and bigger communities and this will, will be very important. Um, it was also part of my own experience because I have said this, I have grown a, a regional network already in the past. We were thinking about scaling up, but I, I came to the point where I realized I just had to let it go to make the next step. So the, the team is still operating on a smaller base. They are staying this, uh, in, the, in the area. And I was leaving to focus on what my heart is, is beating for and co-create was coming out of it. And um, yeah, I think we'll have a lot of deep, deep connections in future during this process. And I'm looking forward to onboard more facilitators, more community builders more experts in nonviolent communications on in convergent moderation. So if somebody of you is watching this, please reach out for us and we will reach out to you at the beginning of the next chapter um, when we start to connect the infrastructure. So the number of you was growing over time. Thank you. Um, I'm right now feeling like sad quite enough now is my question, do you have specific questions to me? Please use the uh, Facebook comment function to ask a question or share your thoughts um, so we can spend a little bit more time with the topic of from network to ecosystem. I give you a little bit of time. I'm just waiting. And I will think if I have something else to share in a while as well. Oh, yes, I found something. Keep on thinking, share if you uh, have something. I'm just searching for. <laughs> okay, I found another graphic I would like to share with you. Um, so again, the invitation, if you have some uh, questions or input for further um discussion, please bring them in. In the meanwhile, I will share this graphic. It's not for me. As you can see in the right top, it's from Ashoka. Ashoka is a global um, organization uh, are being very deep in networking, especially regarding different sectors of society. This is something which is not part of the ecosystem graphic yet, but it's very, very important for us to connect the different sectors of society. 
So the classical are uh, civil society, business and government. Uh, I would like to add science. And uh, we implemented it, co-create something what we call our social backgrounds. So it's giving a little bit more diversity because there we have like the techies, we have the activists, we have the spiritualists and naturalists. Um, we have the, I call it sustainable economy because there are many different kind of, we have B Corps, we have cooperatives, we have purpose economy, we have the economy of common good and so on. I'm collecting it there. And it's very important for me to reach out to the, this big diversity because I think there are big, uh, quite big bubbles, social bubbles in the silos right now. But enough from this, uh, I came away from the graphics, sorry. So we have this graphic from Ashoka. It's in uh, German because it was made by, um, or from Ashoka, Austria, made by Fast Research, you see in the left top corner. It's an awesome institute working with network management and network modeling. So they have a format um, called, I'm not sure if it's right, but Snowball Evaluation um, Network. No, I'm really not sure about that. But they start with people asking them to suggest people in a specific topic uh, who are experts and they're going to these people and asking those again, who are the experts? And they do it for a long time within a specific um, area. And so, and sh come up with graphics like this. And you see smaller points and bigger points and the bigger points are uh, people or organization who are mentioned most. So you can um, think of them like knowledge hubs. And they did this graphic for, I think, the civil society within Austria. Well, they call it the, the map of change makers in Austria. And you see here different topics, like we have at the top migration, inclusion, we have health and social on the right side, kids and youth, um, education, ecology, uh, regional development and ecology and energy and sustainability. And when we can zoom in here, and then you can see it more clearly, different names and people who are connected to each other. And I was amazed when I saw this graphic as a huge post on a wall. At the same time, it's giving, it's, it gives me the feeling of, yeah, this is the current state of network. In any how we are connected, but how the heck should I find the right person for my issue or my question or my offer in this mess of network. <laughs> and this is a very big drive for me to what we have here is a um, hidden ecosystem. Like the ecosystem is existing, but it's not really visible and not really um, sorted. And from here, I'm coming to another thing I would like to share, share with you. Um, and it's the, the mycelium approach. So the term mycelium is coming from the mushrooms. So you have a mushroom is the fruit at the top in the forest. The mycelium are the roots beneath the forest. And many years ago, I attended a summer camp at a very interesting place in Switzerland. And there was somebody who, is, who was inviting and opening up a, like in an open space format to work regarding a mycelium model of global governance. So global is another term like this. Global is the combination of global and local. Like think global, act local, it's global. And he wanted to see how we can use the symbol or the picture of the mycelium, um, which is a very high interconnected network. And this mycelium of mushrooms are connected to trees as well. So there are specific mushrooms are growing in a, in a near of specific trees and they are exchanging um, resources. And we wanted to, to take a look on this picture. And it's really feeling like that. So when I'm showing and I'm, I'm sharing to changing to this, no. Um, uh, change the way how I'm sharing. Uh, 
and TypeScript. So for me, it's really like, this is the reality. This is more mycelium like We are everywhere, we are connected in a very um, dynamic way. And that's good because it's realistic, it's dynamic. But for understanding and for managing the network, I think we have to change our perspective to more structure. It doesn't mean that this structure is the reality then. And I really don't want to create new borders. Of course, there are many, many overlaps in this graphic, but to understand it and to give them text to make it strategically interconnectable, um, we need different view. And this is what I am suggesting to come from a chaos to more order. And I'm referring to another concept it's called Chaotic Organization. Uh, there is a book for it. I really love it. Um, speaking about the word chaotic. So it's a form where we connect chaos and order. Um, and yeah, that were my two more shares I had at this point. I'm excited to look back because there are two new comments. I stopped the screen sharing. Sorry. Um, Alex Reed, thank you for joining the conversation. What do we have here? So thank you. Um, yeah, Alex was suggesting that we are interlinking inter our web pages. Um, I think that's a very um, interesting approach. Uh, we have thought already about it. Uh, it's therefore, uh, while I'm not discussing it right now, it's because it's focusing more on the part of the IT. So there might be one stream where I'm presenting as a base for everything further for the co-creation process further in the IT sector, my thoughts, and there were already um, a thought like that. So the idea is uh, that we, on the one side, we have one dashboard. So we have one page where we can collect all the platforms we have already and search through them for different functions. At the same time, we have like, uh, how we call it? Dashboard and share bar, like a bar which is then included on each website, which is part of this dashboard, this ecosystem. So uh, one web page, and you have a bar on the side where you can scroll through different other topics where you can then easily jump from your page to another page. I think this will be very important, especially to keep this individuality in the collective. Do so we have one main page, but at the same time, of course, we can keep the smaller pages as well. So thank you for sharing your thought. And another question from Robert. I will use the function to share it on screen because I really like it. Do you feel a physical location like a synergy hub where similar teams co-create on a network of networks, a logical part of the process after COVID? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, Yes, because I really appreciate and I think it's really, really important that um, we have places to come together because it's a different quality um, to work together in real person than in by himself. And the other thing is that you cannot be at one point and decentralized very well at the same time. So I'm not quite sure about that. We had a lot of discussion about that already regarding the model because the model looks quite uh, centralized when you see the node in the middle and then rings outside, but it should be not. Um, but yeah, anyway, from the side of the, the nodes, I've, see, I've said before that the platform is very important as a window to this ecosystem. So that's true for the one part, the IT, the online part. It's very important to be very effective, can spread information very wide and structure information very, um, very effectively. 
The other reality is the offline reality. And therefore, we have the second window um, about through hubs and nodes. And those are offline centers. So we are aiming for the ecosystem that we have one or many platforms, at the same time that we have many hubs. And the interesting thing here, again, we as co-create, we don't want to build any hub by ourselves, but these hubs already exist. So we have probably the Synergy Hub. We have um, many um, global solutions. No, how are they called? Um, the global eco-village network. We have many global eco-villages around the world. Um, when we have a look at Impact Hub, we have many Impact Hubs around the world. We have community centers. We have um, yeah, community spaces, many of them. And if you are all connecting them into one ecosystem, you suddenly have hubs everywhere around the world um, aiming for a shared purpose, being a window to the wider ecosystem. And I think this is a very interesting approach. And at the same time, um, we have the decentralized situation and probably there might be some bigger parts as well. So yes, my personal big dream is that there is um, the, uh, yeah, one main global hub as a really big um, eco-village focusing on the research um, of this. And of course, there we are many candidates um, already out there. So we have in Spain, Tamara is a very interesting place. We have Auroville in India. Um, I don't know where around the world are other big projects which could fit for that. But um, yeah, I think this combination of se having centers and being decentralized is very important but not easy to resolve. Um, when you speak about after COVID, maybe, and this is something that what I really like is the principle of uh, changing leadership. So maybe we have intervals of um, three to six months uh, or 12 months um, where different places around the world taking the leadership for being a central hub where people can meet want to meet in person to work on this ecosystem that could be very interesting and would um, fit very well to my personal dream because since long time I'm dreaming about a world travel with co-create visiting different places and projects building local ecosystems I have been I have traveled to Chile at the end of 2019 um, and wanted to start my world travel and I had to flew back with a uh, um, official flight from the government um, in March 2020. So this was stopped for now. I'm looking forward to what's coming next. I am eager to visit some of you in person. And yes, so Robert says, yes, he, um, he meant the idea of one global hub. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe there will be one global hub Maybe there will be several. So I had one time the vision coming away from one global hub to have six or seven global hubs, like to have in each continent uh, one global hub focusing on different um, points. And I once had the vision that um, I hope a lot of you know the Green Belt Initiative. The I'm really losing the, the term. So there is a big initiative want to make a green belt around the Sahara. And I think for for a vision of an included world would be awesome to to set focus on this transformation of the Sahara to have um, the hub there uh, because I think there you can bring a lot of knowledge and positive solutions um, grow the green Sahara and test on the one side low tech solutions as well as high tech solutions uh, would be one idea. Um, other idea would be to have many places, um, or at least um, each in one continent. We'll see. Very specific question. Thank you, Robert, for this. Um, and this really pointed out the combination of online and offline. Um, and I think it's very important to don't forget the offline part when we speak about 
knowledge management, knowledge connection, um, global ecosystem, platforms, and so on. Um, yeah, so we have one hour now. I'm I'm open for any further conversation. If you have thoughts, questions, post it here. I will take some more time to think about if I can share something more related to this question. Um, And yes, I was founding another thing I would like to share with you. I just tried to find the right picture because I'm missing here. Don't find it here, so I'll search it in the web. Okay, I got it. So a short introduction of what I will share now and then I will share it and explain it. So um, it's relating to the platform aspect because um, yeah, I think the IT part will be very important. Not the only thing, but very important. And here we go. Um, and this is a part or a picture for the vision I have for the digital ecosystem. So speaking about already, we have a lot of platforms out there which we can connect and create the ecosystem. And what I've found and what I will share now is the social media prisma sharing this. So I just picked a random website. I don't know which website we're on right now. But this is the graphic of the social media prisma. So what does it, what is it? It's a collection of different social media, or not only social media, it's a collection of different platforms. These, of course, are all standard corporate platforms. So it's not what we are aiming for, for connecting. But it shows very nicely different use cases or types of platforms. So we have the social platforms, we have video platforms, we have music, co-creation co platforms, and so on. And my dream is that we are collecting alternatives to these platforms. And these alternatives should be like, there are platform cooperatives, so they are self-owned, they are open source, or what else? I think you know what I mean, uh, what we are searching for. And we're filling in this social media or this platform Prisma through our own self-governed platforms and I'm sure we have many of them already. And if we are able to connect them in one ecosystem, connected through single sign-on service and strong APIs interfaces, we really will be much more powerful. And again, I really, yeah, to be honest, I think some of the platforms existing right now should merge so they can be stronger together. So they're not fighting for users, but going together as a community and they have bigger teams to develop on. Um, and then we really can create much more powerful tools and can get rid of, of Google and other big platforms, which are quite problematically right now. So yeah, this is one part and this you can imagine on each other infrastructure part, like, okay, what are the funding streams? We have funding streams from the government we have funding streams through um, um, crowdfunding platforms. We have funding streams through other donation forms and so on. And we all collect them and give it a single entry point so it's easy for you to find what is fitting for you. Do the same for facilitation. What are the best 
people organization and solutions methods for your community building, for your med mediation, for your decision making process, for your political democracy uh, processes, mm, for your whatever. And the same in communication. So what are the organizations, people, resources out there who are, connect, who are communicating for a good life for all already? What um, movies, what music, what video artists, uh, which media platforms, which press and so on. Because then if we can connect those um, with the ecosystem, it's easier for them to find content and as well, of course, for the single organizations to find streams to inform and imagine how powerful if we as ecosystem decide on a common message, which is most important, let's say, in one quarter of the year and next quarter is the next message or the next campaign. And we can use all of the streams together to bring out our information into the world. It's much more powerful than what we have right now. And this is what I'm getting exciting about when I'm thinking about the ecosystem. And I really hope you can see my excitement right now. So, yeah, I think 2021 would be a really awesome and exciting year. Um, I, I'm sure it still sounds like dreaming a little bit for a lot of you, but we're getting there. We're getting there. So this was another sharing regarding ecosystems and... Yeah, again, I say it for last time, maybe something is coming up for me or for you. Maybe you have some ideas to spread, some questions. I'm open to, to stay here with you. We'll see what is coming up next. And my head is running already again. What can I share more? <laughs> So I found one more thing. Um, it seems like there are still people watching, so you're still interested in what I can say, so I will share more. Um, I said it before when I showed my ecosystem model, or co-creates ecosystem model, that you see a picture and of course there are groups in it. So what I'm speaking about now is the principle of Holon or different subgroups. We have it also in the term of meta network, means meta network is a network of networks. A network is a um, group of groups and so on. And I will share again my screen and show this picture. Um, no, do you know this picture? I showed this picture. It's not high quality. I just dropped it somewhere out. But the basic idea is you have one system as a part of a bigger system. This bigger system is part of a another bigger system and this again part of a bigger system. So um, this is what you can call Holland principle. One part is part of another part. You can see it um, in our body. So a cell, uh, different cell, different atoms are building a cell, different cells are building our organs, different organs are building our body, different bodies building a society. And this is very important for the scaling in um, to, to say, okay, what is a meta network? And there, there are different networks. In these networks, there are groups. Um, and as well, it will be very important for the different groups within the co-create process. Like I showed before, um, we have the whole ecosystem. In the whole ecosystem, we're dividing different sectors. One of it is the infrastructure. In the inf infrastructure, we have different main things like um, IT, 
within the IT, there are different platforms like um, maps, marketplaces, organization platforms, social platforms. And within these platforms, there are different, uh, well, within these different categories, there are different platforms. Of course, it's just like a tree system, you know it, but it's really, really essential uh, when we, when I speak about connecting the global ecosystem that we break this complexity down to the very concrete things and functions um, because on this level we can operate more specifically but actually all of these groups are are there have a reason there will be communication in it and it's very important to specifically um, connect them and spe specifically address them because then we can also interconnect them again you see here in the blue circle a different green um, hexagons we zooming in and coming from one hexagon, but there are other ones as well. And this is what you see in the infrastructure that um, the IT platforms relate to the communication and relate to the funding and relate to the facilitation. They need each other to drive for impact because it's not enough for a network to have a good platform if they are um, having troubles in communicate outside or if they have trying to get funds. By, but by include all of the resources, we can be really, really powerful. Um, yeah, that was another thought regarding the Hollands. And I'm eager to hear more about the Open World Alliance because I think they, or at least the organization which are part of them, um, are working on or have already built, I don't know, a platform um, focusing very much on this Holland principle. Still yet the things, the visualizations I saw have been very, hmm, how to say, innovative and, um, and futuristic and very, also from the communication, very on the side of spiritualists. So the question here is how we can evolve and innovate in a speed where people can can follow us. And this is also a question, and I got this question, why are we using Facebook, why I'm using YouTube? It's just because we are reaching people there which are in the normal system right now, and we are part of the normal system as well. So I do want to use other tools in future, but if there are no people or the tools are not working properly, um, we, we have first to build our strength to then create the better tools we need. Thank you for this recommendation, the Crowdfunder CEO UK. Hold on web. Oh yeah, I think I have heard about this before. So another thought I put into the big bucket of um, thoughts regarding ecosystem and networks. There might be more, maybe you have questions at this point or your ideas you would like to share. Um, I give a little bit more time as well because it's my favorite topic, so I don't want to press this. Uh, maybe I find something more. I'm sorry that I didn't, that I really have to look it up. I didn't prepare everything. Um, as I said before, actually, this call should have been with the Open World Alliance, but the interview partner had an urgent personal situation, so I jumped in. And I'm quite happy right now because it's like giving a base of the thoughts um, of, of co-create, what is behind um, of co-create and how do we see the network, uh, the network of networks. And so from now on, each Thursday will be an interview, a network talk we, where we take other people in, in conversation. I'm looking very forward to come back to the Open World Alliance I'm in contact right now with the peer-to-peer -peer foundation. And I think there are very much interesting uh, projects out there. I'm happy to connect with. Right now I'm searching if there's anything else would be interesting to share now.
No, I think it's good enough for now. So last chance, write something in the comments. If you have a question, if you want to share something, say stop. Or otherwise, I'm going to check out now. I'm really happy that um, more people like it. the first in, uh, first stream were following. I hope it will be more in the next one. Um, each Tuesday, there will be now a expert talk focusing on the topic of the actual chapter. Now we are um, in the in the chapter visioning a good life for all, and each Thursday will be a network talk as well as on different days on the weekend we will have our community calls, and yeah, there will come up many more many more things. Uh, maybe to cl close this um, talk about structure and network again with some thoughts about the process. So we decided to bring co-create into the world as global co-creation process means no, global co-creation process. Yeah, uh, the global co-creation challenge. Uh, that means that we put out challenges on a weekly or at least two weekly base. We, we invite you to participate, to bring in your skills. If there is not a challenge out yet where you can participate, they will come. So. So we decided to enroll this ecosystem step by step so we can grow in complexity, we can test, we can prototype. The word prototyping is very important because um, if you're coming here with high expectation, you might see that many things are not finished yet, that many things are not polished and that's not our goal. We are in prototyping. We put ourselves out there to just show up and share what we're doing. We want to make... Uh, the biggest part uh, of the creation process public so you can share and participate. So there's no polishing, uh, excuse me for that if you're expecting it, but we will grow to more professionalization. And most important was for me to show up and to get in contact with you. So again, please um, follow our YouTube and Facebook and website. Uh, over the course of the next days and weeks because more and more would be published. Um, we hope we took a form which is good enough for now so you can um, participate and find what you need. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please share them. We're happy to include it, uh, to include your thoughts. And very, very important, please support this process by showing up, by participating at the challenges. And like we are on social media, give us likes, follow us on YouTube, uh, take a abo, comment, and so on. You know, it's make it makes a difference if you want to reach out to the global community and reach more people to be able to co-create the good life for all. So that's the finish. One last comment. Thank you, Alex, for sharing your page. Um, it will come into the collection of the platforms where we will take a look more into detail in chapter two. For now, again, thank you for watching. It was awesome with you. Um, please like and share and looking forward to see you soon. On Saturday, there is our next community call and you will find the link to the future events down below. Have a great day. Thank you for joining in. My name is Hans Herzog and it's I'm really glad and really happy to be able to invite you and welcome you to the Global Co-Creation Challenge. See you soon. Ciao.